Chef Zhu. I'm a, I'm a holistic nutritionist as well as a plant-based from the table style chef. Let thy food be thy medicine, medicine thy food, right? So if someone's going to say, does anybody feel like that? Like, yeah, let thy food be thy medicine and thy medicine thy food. Who feels like that? Okay. So now, now let me see this girl show of hands. Who feels like let thy food be thy medicine and thy medicine thy food? That's almost everybody in the building. Okay. So this is how we're going to make sure you'll get closer to that point if you're not already there. Now, everybody put your hand down. Now, how many people are into production of food, the growing, the farming? How many? So the number of hands is way less, right? Okay, I'm going to have to go somewhere with this, so just bear with me. How many people are into aggregation? That would be the gathering. So the production, come here, brother, real quick. A matter of fact, I got the other farmer here. He's the real farmer, but you both come because we need another farmer with it. the farmer. The farmer that actually grew this stuff on the table I'm working with today. But y'all act like y'all working in the field. Come on. Come on. Y'all farmers now? Come on. Do something. We about to have fun with the field. Do something. Here you go. Here's a tomato for you and a tomato for you. Here you go. There you go. Okay? You ain't supposed to eat it. You supposed to. You, you growing it. <laughs> I know that's right. <laughs> okay, so... And now, you grew the food, and you got the food, y'all both got the food, but if you grew the food, you still had to, what? Well, you had to get the soil right, but you had to get the food together. Because you got tomatoes on this bunch, but you got tomatoes on this bunch, you got tomatoes on this bunch, so you got to aggregate. You got to gather those so that we can put them in something to sell off to the next person, right? But I'm saying... How many people are in the aggregation? That would be the gathering of the vegetables after the production was done. So the hands are much less again. Okay, then how about the distribution? After I gathered it, they grew it, I gathered it, and now Duran wants it, but Duran is in, uh, what is it called? What's that other, uh, Chartersville? Yeah, Char Duran's in Chartersville, so we gotta distribute the food that they grew, that I gathered, and we got to get it on to him. So how many people do that? Like pushing the food from anybody? No? Okay, now. How many people eat food every day? Everybody. See what I'm saying? Okay. And now how many people are into restoration or cultivation of uh, compost? Okay. So that's good, but less hands. Now my point is, those five things that we just said, right? What came before production? Where did the production come from? Hmm? The seed, right? So where did the seed come from? This is like the chicken or the egg. What came first, chicken or the egg? So did you have an eggplant and get the seed out of the eggplant, or did you have a seed and get the eggplant out of the seed? But did you have God that gave you the seed? That you had God that gave you the seed? So what comes before production is God. And what I'm trying to show you is, if you want to eat godly, then you got to be closer to God when getting your food. So if consumption is on level four down here, but God is on above one up here, and you ain't getting your food to level four, then it's a lot of disconnect, and a lot of men touched your food. Women touched your food. So now we talk about vibration. Y'all know about vibration. So you got the wrong people handling your food now. They doing things they ain't supposed to do, stealing money, all types of just whatever they doing. Arguing, I seen one brother there. And I'm just like, why are you talking about your woman like that? But the thing was, he was so mad that he was over the food talking. I was just like, don't talk that bad stuff over my food and put that vibration of whatever y'all going through over my food so that I eat that food and now me and my girl going through it. And you be like, what happened? It was just like a flu, because you can catch it. Don't think you can. You know, so my
My whole point is just to try to get closer to God in the process of eating your food. And the only way you could do that is start to work with the production, work with the aggregation, work with the distribution, work with, of course, we want to do consumption, and then the restoration. And when you're doing all five of those, or two out of the five, or three out of the five, you now have a greater percentage of getting closer to nature and God and further away from man. Does that make any sense to y'all? Yes, sir. You sure? Does it make every uh, sense to everyone? Yes. Can I get an eye shade if it does? Ashe. All right. So, yeah, I mean, the key to, I think, living healthier through food uh, would be to understand the food system. And we, you know, tend to call these categories by different names, but um, generally speaking, you have production, aggregation, distribution, consumption, and restoration. And once again, the uh, production could be farming, the aggregation could be processing, but, you know, if we don't, so I'd always go like this, almost like five fingers, and then we want to look at the percentages too. So I ask people like, you know, out of these five parts, what are you doing? And then the person says, well, I'm consuming. Okay, so you got one. Then I say, well, do you grow producing? No, so you don't get none. Hmm. Then I say, well, are you distributing? Hmm. No. How about the aggregation? No. Restoration, you got some compost in the back? No. Hmm. So you're left with one. Which is fine. We're meeting people where they are, so we don't want to make a person feel any one type of way. Mm -hmm. But that's one out of five. Mm -hmm. And we're going to go on a percentage that's 20%. Mm -hmm. If this was a test, you would have failed. Mm -hmm. And you have to look at it. This is the test. Life is a test. Do your best, forget the rest. Mm -hmm. Life is a test. Mm -hmm. right? This old man used to tell me this when I was young. Mm -hmm. um, so now you're, you know, looking at a 20% on your test, basically, through a food system, though, right? And the key is to always pass the test, right? And also to know that out of these five components or these five categories of the food system, that if we were to flip it this way, now we're looking at it from farming, production, aggregation, processing, distribution, consumption, and restoration, we know that production is the seed. And we ask, well, what came first, the plant or the seed? Did you have a plant to get the seed from, or did you have a seed to get the plant from? So it's that re revolving door of what came first, the chicken or the egg? Mm -hmm. Huh? Okay. So I don't know. You, you have to figure that out. But what I'm saying is regardless of what you think, the higher connection would have to be nature, God, right? So we want to always try to make sure that we sooner or later end up with some know-how of the production. That's the key. Because if we do that, then we can just move on down. You know, if you, if you know how to do some, let's just say, collard greens, if you could grow collard greens, that was the hardest part. The hardest part was to grow the collard greens. So if you did that, now the aggregation is just collecting the collard greens that's in the field. That's not too hard. After mm -hmm. you already grew them, all you got to do is just go pick them. Mm -hmm. right? And then the distribution could be just, I'm going to give my next door neighbor, Miss Mary, some. I'm going to give my friend Duran some. And I'm going to give my family some. Mm -hmm. right? And now we're going to consume them. We're all going to eat them. And whatever doesn't get eaten... Uh, some people don't like to eat all of the stems or what have you. Maybe even a couple leaves had too many uh, insect you know, holes in them for you. So you want to throw those away, restoration. But the key to know, though, with dealing with all of this is that, you know, and I don't like to say God too much because some people don't, they don't do that. Mm -hmm. You know, but I would say nature, right? You're, you're closest to nature. And if you believe in God, then you definitely have a connection to God. Blue zones are the areas where the life expectancies of the people living in that region are the highest in the world. Okay? So once again, it's where the people are living the longest. Right? Through data, these people are living the longest. So I'm going to just run down five of the um, top five, the top five blue zones. 
So you have Okinawa, Japan. Okay. You have uh, Sardinia, Italy. You have, uh, I might be pronouncing it wrong, but it's like Nicoya, um, Costa Rica. Okay, you have Icaro, Greece. And you have Loma Linda, California, where it's like a seven day of Venice. Um, I don't know how to, like a compound out there, you know. And the, the point that I'm trying to make is, when we talk about food, what do we all eat the food for? To live. To what? To live. To live. So to sustain, sustain? Sustain life, right? So I started thinking about food one day, and I said, if we're trying to sustain life, then let me figure out where the people live the longest at, and then let me figure out what they're eating, and then let me go back and see what we're eating, and then check our life expectancies and see if this makes any sense to me. And it sure made a whole lot of sense. I started looking at the numbers and looking at the diets and I said, wow, all of these places I mentioned, they hardly eat no meat, like hardly any. And if they do, it's a very, very small amount, okay? So I'm not here to try to turn you into a vegan, turn you into a vegetarian, any of that, but I'm just trying to make sure that as black people, we have a chance and not just black people, all people have a chance to live with longevity, right? Because in that, if we have longevity, we have more chances to fix the things that might we might feel are wrong or things that aren't right, right? But if you have more time, if I gave you two hours and said solve this problem, do you think you would feel better about it if I said you only got 15 minutes? What would you want? Would you want the two hours or the 15 minutes if I said solve the problem? Two hours, right? So this is the same with life. Would you want to have 90 years? Because some of these places are expected to live to 90, 92. We're here in America, it's like 74, 76, something like that. Perfect example of Rita Franklin. How old was she? 70, so right on the money. Was she vegan or vegetarian? Did she eat a lot of meat? Probably. Yeah. So the timing is right when we start to look at these diets, right? So I just wanted to point that out real quick. In the morning on, Let me see you know, else. We didn't have bacon all the time from her kitchen table, um, you know, every day of the week. It was more of like a special occasion type of thing when she would cook the whole full breakfast with the meats. But like I said, I would go to the deli and get the, you know, sandwiches from them. Um, but the first thing I thought of is, once again, those flavors, you know, it was just like salt, but then sweet, right? Mm -hmm. So that's the curing is the salt and then the sweet, mm -hmm. but now as a nutritionist, I can't really do sugar. So how am I going to bring it back? Oh yeah, maple, mm -hmm. which has a low glycemic index of 54, which is under 55. So anything 55 or under is considered low. Mm -hmm. And we know that, you know, we tie all of this in, you know, diabetes in the black community and how high are these numbers, extremely mm -hmm. high. So we want to make sure we're doing all of this at the same time. Because think about my grandmother, her sister had diabetes, mm -hmm. and, you know, that's my aunt. Mm -hmm. And then my other aunt got diabetes, and then my uncle got diabetes. So for me, it was a culmination of everything. It was it was restoring family um, family. It was restoring family tradition, but at the same time, connecting the same flavors that I remember and that everybody else in the farm, you know, on the land today will remember. Um, mm -hmm. and, and just you know, being myself when doing it. Right. You know, never feeling like there isn't any pressure, right. Right? right? You can't go into it like that because now you're super comfortable and that's where all of that extra love is gonna come from, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. Never feeling too anxious or too nervous, for what? You know, cause this is good food and good people. Mm -hmm. So I think a lot of times chefs, they start to do that too. They start to kind of get frazzled by what's going on and now you can't put as much love into it cause you throwing these other emotions into it. All right, so the key too is to always remember to place that love in the food.
Right? That should be almost the first spice, right? The first seasoning is that love. You know, so I came with a whole lot of love, memories from my grandmother, um, and just, you know, bring them to the table today. And when we talk about the eggplant bacon, the one good thing about it is um, sustainability. So, you know, we always talk about the zero waste and the composting. Um, so now you have to think about the life of an eggplant, how long would it have to live? But if we dehydrate it, you know, now we prolong that shelf life and then we could even vacuum seal it to even take that further and we don't have to lose out or have waste when we talk about our food so it was a lot of key components but you know zero waste top of the key family tradition top of the key and um so he had you know, mentioned nutrient more. dense right and how important that is to farming and how important it is to us and he, uh, Deron also mentioned, the, he meant to say 108, but he said 56, uh, talking about the elements of the body and all of that. And um, so what we need to know is, if you cook it, you kill it. That's right. Okay? Because heat at the temperature of 115 starts to kill the nutrients in the food. It's just what heat would do, it would just break it down, right? So if I put, you know, this, if I threw this in the fire, it wouldn't last long, right? But if I didn't have no fire and I left it on the table, it might sit here all day, it might sit to the end of the month, right? As soon as the heat hit it. So you got to understand that these ovens that we're using, what's the average temperature that you cook with when you use your oven, ma'am? What's the average temperature when you use your oven? She said about 350, okay, over here? About 350, 400 in you? About 400. Okay, so I said 115, right? And 115 is at the temperature where the nutrients do start to break down, meaning that you would have to be under 115. Okay? But let's just go with 115 and multiply that times 3. Then what do we get at that point? 345. So we all said 350, 375, 400. So we didn't kill that food two and three times over before we put it in our body. And then we once again got our hands prayed, talking about, dear God, please make this food uh, nutritious for my body. Well, you done killed it. It ain't coming back either. And it's not, like, she, like the, uh, Omi said, you know, it's not coming back after you done killed it. And you're trying to put a prayer on it, hoping that's going to bring it back. So I say all of that to say, you know, the first method of when we talked about zero waste and going back to saving food, the first method would have been dehydration and also smoking of food, curing and smoking of food. So um, we had dehydrated basically, well, let me show you this right here. So basically I made a, a raw bread round. So this is local pecans. Once again, I got the pecans right here from Georgia. I could trace it back to the pecan farmer, so I know exactly where my pecans came from. I used some flax seed, uh, some cherries, some raisins, a um, little seasoning, spice, and I dehydrated these. Okay? So you have a raw bread bite. All right. From there, I took uh, Farmer Johnny's uh, eggplants. Farmer Johnny John, and I made some bacon by dehydrating it, okay? So once again, everything's under 115, that's your bread and your bacon. Now, they call it a BLT, right? As I was growing up, that's what they were serving me, BLTs. But as I got older, I started to develop a, um, a, a, a palate that was really wanting other things, right? Like I'm tired of lettuce, because I didn't have lettuce in every salad that I had since I was two. Um, so by the time I'm 40, I don't even really want too much lettuce anymore. So for a BLT, I'm like, let me do basil now. That's going to be my new lettuce, right? So it's, you got your raw bread, you got your raw eggplant bacon, then you have your raw basil, and then we're going to do a cherry tomato on top. And then I did, just because I knew I was coming for a lot of black people, I brought some cheese. 
<laughs> Stop acting like that. I don't know. Hot sauce and cheese on everything. Stop buying. Brother had hot sauce on his watermelon earlier. I mean, he was like, really? You know what it is? Uh, I mean, hot sauce in the swag bag. I mean, sister got hot sauce in the swag bag. They got, uh, they doing sriracha keychains now. But I, I mean, it would be crazy if I seen Texas Pete, Louisiana, or Frank's on a keychain. But the Asians, they do got sriracha on a keychain now. That's so that's hot sauce in your swag bag. Um, but you know, so I'm just playing with y'all. But really not, because you know, black people do love cheese. So I said, okay, I'm gonna bring some cheese too, right? But this is cashew cheese I made this morning with uh, cashews, a little nutritional yeast, um, some fresh lemon squeeze, a little spice in there and some coconut cream. Um, so I made it like a coconut cream cheese drizzle. Uh, almost like a queso, but a raw, okay? So that's, I'm gonna go ahead and put this together real quick. And anybody that wants to can come up, and even if maybe one or two people wanna help a little bit, I can give you some gloves, I can have you either put the tomato or the basil on the uh, bites, and we'll do about 50. We're gonna stop at 50 but we would definitely give out about 50 of these um, bites. Okay? Sound good? All right, we'll talk again after we eat, all right? Okay. All right, let's do it. Yeah, that would work too. It would be plenty. Yes, I mean, we want to we, we want to engage more. the community. We don't want to just okay. yeah. We got two volunteers for you. Okay. Okay. okay, so you can come on this side if you don't mind. Both of y'all come on this side if you don't mind. Okay. And then I got some gloves over here. Right. And if you're not scared of the knife, you scared of the knife? On the top of the list for best practices when it comes to presenting um, plant-based lifestyle, and we'll say plant-based lifestyle instead of vegan, because okay. somebody might have a leather belt on, somebody might got some leather shoes on, or whatever the case may be, you know. But so we're not talking about that part of it. We're strictly talking about the food, um, and I think the most important thing to do is to meet people where they are, right? So I don't expect anyone to meet me where I'm at because I might be seven years into it. I could be 21 years into it. And if you're just stepping in the door, how could I expect you to meet where I'm at? But I can come meet you where you are because I remember the time when I was standing in the door. So that's how I treat people, you know, when we do our facilitations, programs, classes, mm -hmm. even catering. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you'd be surprised how many people don't know the possibilities of how plant-based could go. Mm -hmm. So people are just like, you know, what can you fix? I'm like, I can fix anything. Mm -hmm. I'm like, oh yeah, yeah, I've, I've got to meet you where you are because you don't understand that I can fix anything. You still think that means no cheesesteak, that means no pizza, that means no, and then I have to reiterate, no, I can make pizza. I can make cheesesteak, I can make, you know, and once again, meeting them where they are. And they're at that beginning level of understanding. If I ask them to meet me where I am, I might be in a professor level of understanding when it comes to plant-based. Um, so, you know, I made sure that that was first and foremost today, um, to just, you know, bring it to the person and not expecting the person to bring it to me. And when you do that, now you, give a person the option of do I want to buy in to what I'm seeing today and that's how it feels it's like you know I can I can or I don't have to but a lot of times I'm in situations to where I see people trying to teach and it's like they're pushing it on the people so much and so hard that they're pushing people away in the process and we don't want to do that at all I mean you know it's trying to get zoo. Shout out to Vegan Action. The 16th annual Happily Natural Day was a great success. We appreciate all that you've done to help. And uh, you can find me at kingsapron.com, kingsapron on social media. That would be like a Twitter or Instagram at kingsapron. Yeah.